Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. If you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking about switching to Linux, but you're overwhelmed because there are dozens and dozens of different options out there. Well, today I'm going to help you decide which one is the right choice for you. And that being said, let's dig right in. So I want to apologize for my absence over the last few weeks. I've actually been moving. You may have noticed that my setup is a little bit different. Uh, basically, we moved from a college town to a small town, and uh, I'm very happy with it so far. You know, you can get a lot more space for a lot less money in a small town. But anyway, that's why I've been gone for so long, and to all of my returning viewers, welcome back. I'm glad you stuck around even though I was pretty quiet and I should be back to my regular posting schedule. So anyway, let's get into the main topic. Which Linux distribution and which desktop environment is right for you? Well, first of all, we need to define what a Linux distribution is. So you, you hear this a lot. People say, which distro do you use? Because there are many different types of Linux operating systems. See, to give you some background information, uh, the Linux kernel and the supporting utilities, they're all open source for the most part. And because of that, anybody can take the source code of one distribution, modify it a little bit, and then put it up for download to everybody else who wants that modified version. Totally legal, in fact it's encouraged. And because of this ability to copy other people's work and modify it a little bit, it means there are lots and lots of distributions. So that's what a distribution is. Basically, they took Linux, they modified it a little bit, and then they made it available for you to use, which is pretty cool. But the problem, of course, is that you get choice overload. <laughs> I mean, when you have dozens of choices, you're like, oh God, which one do I pick? It's stressful. Well, I'm gonna take away that stress for you. The first thing that you need to do is understanding your needs. And the first question that I think you should answer is, should you even switch to Linux? Here's what you do. Write down everything that you need to do with a computer, and then write down what software you can use to do those things. Then make sure that that software is available on Linux. And if it's not, don't worry, there's probably an alternative. But if there is an alternative, install it on Windows, test it out, just, just see if it works. Most software that's available on Linux is also available on Windows. So before you switch, find the alternatives that you need and then try them out on Windows and make sure they actually work for you. Look, there's nothing wrong with sticking with Windows. It's a tool, right? At the end of the day, Computers are a tool, and you need to use the right tool for the job. People forget that your operating system choice is not a personality trait. Anyway, so yeah, what you do is you make sure you can do everything you need to do on Linux first. That's step number one. And number two is the important part. What desktop environment are you going to use? I hazard to say that the desktop environment is more important than the distribution you choose. Uh, so let me do some explaining here. A desktop environment is all of the operating system that you interact with. So stuff like the taskbar or the menu bar at the top, that kind of stuff. And so these are the graphical elements that you are going to be interacting with on a daily basis. So you better choose one that you like. And this is similar to distributions in that there's tons of choices, but I'm gonna narrow it down for you. You should pick something popular. Why do I say that? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, if you're using Linux for the first time, and you run into an issue that you need to fix in your desktop environment, then you're gonna Google it. And the more popular the desktop environment is, the more resources you're going to find when you Google your problem. 
if you choose a very niche or unknown desktop environment, and then you have a problem with it and you Google it, you may not get very many results and your problem might not get fixed. So with that in mind, I'd highly recommend that you pick a popular desktop environment. And I'm gonna give you three options that I think are really solid starting points. So your first option is GNOME. GNOME is a lot like macOS, but simpler. That's the best way I can put it. You have a dock at the bottom, you have a menu bar at the top, and you have an expose view that fans out all your windows. There's a heavy emphasis on virtual desktops. If you want something that's like a Mac, then you should probably choose GNOME. GNOME is really polished. It's a great glitch-free system. And I think that if you like that kind of desktop environment, GNOME is gonna serve you well. The second choice you have is KDE, the cool desktop environment. Uh, KDE is a lot like Windows, except it's way more customizable. The default look of KDE mimics that of Windows 10 quite heavily, but every, inter every aspect of the interface is available for you to tweak and customize to your liking. So if you want something like Windows, or you want something totally unique, KDE is a really good choice for any beginner. It's relatively glitch-free, not as good as GNOME, but it has way more options, and if you like to tweak the look of your desktop environment and its behavior, KDE is a really good place to start. All right, and your third option, and I'm only gonna give you three, is the Cinnamon desktop environments. Cinnamon is the simplest of the lot. It behaves and looks like Windows 7. It is very simple in its operation. It gets out of the way and lets you do work. So if you want something like Windows 7, something familiar, maybe not as customizable, but also not as simple, then Cinnamon is a good middle ground. All right, so those are the three desktop environments you should choose from. Now let's talk about distributions. The distribution you choose for your first Linux install should be a popular one. And this is the same reasoning that I had before. When you run into a problem with your system, you're gonna Google it, and the more popular your systems, your operating system choice is, the more likely you are to find answers to your questions. And so, yes, there are dozens and dozens of distributions in a big family tree. I'm going to give you three options to pick from to get you started. The first, and my recommendation, is Fedora Linux. Fedora Linux is a business-focused workstation operating system. Now, you can use it for gaming. You can install Steam and play games all you want, but its focus is on providing a stable, and usable workstation experience. Uh, Fedora has, it has a GNOME version, it has a KDE version, it has a Cinnamon version, so you can pick Fedora and then pick your desktop environments. Uh, Fedora uses the DNF package manager, but it focuses heavily on flat packs. I'm not going to bother explaining DNF, it's a package manager, you're going to find out about it from using Linux, it's dead simple. Uh, but flat packs, let, let's talk about flat packs, what are they? So let me start by giving you an example. On macOS, when you install a program, you just drag and drop that program into your applications folder and it's done. That program, everything that it needs to operate, is all within that one file and it has limited permissions that you can change uh, to determine what it is and isn't able to access on your system. Uh, it's a similar situation with flat packs. They're not all in one file, but essentially the flat pack is the application that you want to use and all the software that goes along with it to make it work all in one package. And so when you install a flat pack, you're installing the software and everything it needs to work all in one go. Also, similar to macOS, you can define the permissions of each flat pack you install. And a good thing about flat packs is that they're sandboxed. And what that means is that if somebody abuses an exploit in your application and manages to gain control of it, they're going to be limited to only what that one application can access. 
meaning that your whole system doesn't get screwed. There are some downsides to flat packs. So, of course, like I said, they bundle everything that the application needs to operate into one, into one package. Well, sometimes those supporting libraries, those supporting bits of software inside the flat pack are out of date, meaning that they're vulnerable to certain exploits. This causes a bit of an issue because as a developer, they have to go in and they update their little library or application, and now the people who package that application have to update it for every application they manage. All right, and the second choice that I would recommend is Debian. So if you are the type of person who wants something that's just rock solid stable, you don't care about having the latest software, you want something that's just gonna work and it's just secure, Debian is a really good choice. A lot of people recommend Ubuntu. I don't recommend Ubuntu, and here's why. Ubuntu is a fickle thing. Every Ubuntu system that I've used on a desktop has had some kind of weird issue occur where it eats itself and stops working. Uh, look, in my opinion, Canonical, the developers who maintain Ubuntu, I don't think they care about the desktop. I think they're focused on the server, and Ubuntu on the server is great. But the desktop doesn't really make them any money because they give it away for free, and all of their money comes from the server side, so they're incentivized to not pay as much attention to the desktop, and it's kind of been neglected over the last decade. Uh, you're th so, right, so far your choices are Fedora, if you want the latest and greatest, or Debian, if you want something rock solid and stable. The third option I'm going to give you is Linux Mint. So Linux Mint is special because it doesn't support all of the different desktop environments. It just offers you a curated selection, namely the primary one being the Cinnamon desktop. The Cinnamon desktop, like I said earlier, is much like Windows 7. But the, the special thing about Mint is that it's based on Ubuntu, but it fixes a lot of the flaws that Ubuntu has. Namely, it gets rid of snap packages. That's the most important difference in my opinion. Snap packages are like flat packs, but worse. <laughs> snap packages can only be installed from the official snap store that's ran by Canonical, the developers of Ubuntu, and it's not open source. And it has all the same issues as flat packs, except it's less flexible. So I would avoid snaps if you can, stick with flat packs or native packages. So before you go switching to Linux, you should try it out first, see if you like it or not. And thankfully, it's really easy to give Linux a test drive. All you have to do is plug in a USB into your computer, install a Linux distribution on the USB using a tool like Rufus, which is literally just like a three-click menu, and then you have it done. Uh, but once you have that special USB made, you plug that back into your computer, you restart it, and then you tell the computer to use the thumb drive that you plugged in instead of the disk inside of it. Now, it's going to start up off that thumb drive, and when it does, it's going to load you into what's called a live environment. A live environment is special because it's just running off of the USB, but it gives you an opportunity to test the system before you install it, just to make sure that all of your hardware works, make sure that it's going to work the way you want it to. So if I were you, I would spend some time and make a handful of USBs and just boot them up, see which ones work with your hardware, which ones don't, which interfaces you like, which ones you don't. It's a great low-risk way to get a grip on these different options that you have. All right, so let me recap all of this, because I know I've just hit you with a lot of information, so I'm going to summarize the most important parts for you. First of all, you need to make sure that you can do everything that you need to do on Linux. 
what you need to do is write down everything you use the computer for and then write down the applications that you use to perform those actions and then make sure those applications can run on Linux or at least make sure there's an alternative that runs on Linux that you can actually get your work done with. Because if you neglect this step, then you're just going to switch back to Windows the next day. Uh, and we want this to be a permanent change. The second thing you need to do is pick your desktop environment. So I gave you three options and I'd highly recommend sticking to those three options. You have GNOME, which is a lot like macOS. You have Cinnamon, which is a lot like old Windows. And you have KDE, which looks like Windows 10 out of the box, but is highly, highly customizable. You can make it look like whatever you want. The downside is that KDE is more complicated because of that. So those are your three choices. I would pick one of those three. In fact, I would experiment with all three of them with the live USB, and we'll bring that up in a moment. Uh, then the third thing you need to do is pick your distribution. And again, my recommendation is to stick to the three popular ones I listed, Fedora, Debian, and Linux Mint. If you go with any of those three options, you're going to have a good experience. Uh, but again, it's important that you pick something popular, because when you have a problem and you Google it, you're going to get more help online the more popular the distribution is. And finally, step number four. You make a thumb drive that has Linux on it, you start up your computer off that thumb drive, and experiment with it, right? Try, try out a few. You know, don't just limit yourself to one, unless you try the, unless you really love the first one you try. Uh, but give it a shot, see which ones operate best for you. It's a low risk way to get your foot in the door. So anyway, that's how you can pick the right Linux distribution for you. Bye.